I think it's about time I gave you a few updates, some things that have been going on. Um, here, as you see, there is an image done by Johnny Sci-Fi. Pretty much know his his memes. They're pretty recognizable, and I really like this one. But the whole the whole point of it is that we need uh, things like these to be shared around. Uh, since the the leader social media has gone silent again, and we're we are pretty much a leader's marketing department basically uh, we need people to create things like this and also flyers you know paper things that can be passed around to people or posted on doors or walls or outside of stores and these are things that we need um, everyday people that we meet and to, to to look at and to receive because this especially with this push coming up for Black Friday, which is, well, now is the time to start thinking of what you're going to do or how you're going to get the word out. But when we really, really start that push for Black Friday, it can't just be a, an elite, elite army thing only or or something that happens among elite fans. We are, we're going to be needing to reach people who have never seen the movie before and get them interested in seeing the movie. And so that was a that was a question asked, not even a question. That was a post by Charles Schmidt, yeah, on Twitter, and he was saying something about um, the the I believe the video sales. I believe it was the video sales. I'm sorry for, if I'm misremembering this. Representing how many Alita fans were out there, and what he said it. The way he said it was how big is the elite army and i just decided you know just to put something out there you know i, I tend to think of a leader army as not just a leader fans but a leader activists because that's basically what we are we're campaigning and we are actively trying to to make a sequel happen and just if anybody asks you what a leader army is Maybe you could just describe it that way. We're a leader activist. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not here to hate on anything else. We're just pro elite activists. Now back to this this uh, this update that I wanted to give you. If I can make this picture go away, okay. Now the next oh, and also what I put here is that we should put some uh, um yeah put some digital codes or blu-rays into those trick-or-treat bu buckets this year I, I could have said baskets but i said buckets um uh, or maybe just an orange and chocolate bar alita would approve but let's move on here there is also some news on here is shadow without i'm just going to show this because uh it's like i always say if you can afford to buy blu-rays then that's great and if you can't well, just, you know, do whatever you can. And everything matters. Everything counts for something, you know. But since we do have people buying Blu-rays and we do have people sharing Blu-rays, I don't see anything wrong with with uh, recognizing that. And so here we have Shadow Without, who has received some more Blu-rays from Dennis Wan, or Dennis Wan, and he is going to be uh, distributing those I really like this picture that he sent. It reminds me of like uh, he he what is it? I get some kind of old explorer type of vibe from it, like something from Indiana Jones or or the Mummy, and I really dig that picture that he put together. Next update. There is something from what was it called? Uh, ArabBusiness.com says that the most popular movie movie choice on Emirates Airline, Airlines in-flight entertainment system during the month of July was a leader battle angel. It also points out that um, the Avengers, Avengers Endgame was popular in June. Okay, picture move, change. What's going on here? All right, so Captain Marvel was the the movie that was most popular in June, actually. And Alita 
as you can see down here at the in the bottom paragraph, Alita was the most popular in July, and Avengers Endgame was the most popular in August. Now, you'll see right above that in the middle um, sentence, it says the airline carried approximately 16 million passengers between June and August. So that could be about maybe 5.2 million people who saw Alita on the airplane and five or, or those airlines and 5.2 million people who hopefully will buy of course they weren't all uh watching the movie but let's just say optimistically <laughs> uh, optimistically maybe most the majority did watch the movie then hopefully that translates into home video sales so this is another reason why i say that when we look at the the numbers from the numbers.com and we look at some of the sales and they, and they look a little bit low. These are just, or those are just domestic US, you know, North American home video sales. And they, not only does Alita not really have to, to do huge numbers, Alita is already performing better than a movie who only, that only made 85 million domestically is, should perform. Alita is already doing better than that. But Alita doesn't really have to make much more money in order to be uh, called a success. Technically, I think it already is a success. But, you know, um, still, we're just looking at the, the domestic numbers. We have no idea really how, how much Alita is selling outside of the U.S. And there's really no, nothing but cause for optimism, if you ask me. So for those who look at the numbers and feel like they're a little low and maybe feel down about that, I don't think you need to be uh, concerned about that at all. I think Alita is just doing, she's doing just fine. All right, so if I can close this picture here. The next thing that I wanted to share with you is that from the Hollywood Reporter, Alita Battle Angel has been given a nomination for the 14th annual HPA Awards for outstanding visual effects in a theatrical feature. The HPA Awards is the Hollywood Professional Association. And I really hate the way this <laughs> displays on my phone. Sorry about this. The Hollywood Professional Association. And um, you also see there the VX, VFX teams for Avengers Endgame was nominated. Spider-Man Far From Home, The Lion King, and Det Detective Pikachu. In my opinion, my humble opinion, Alita beats out all of those movies. It's so much more, so much more significant and impressive what was accomplished with Alita than what was done with any of these other movies. I went with, I, I'm sure some of you may remember that I that I went with my, I went to see Alita once with my sister, my niece, and um, my nephew and my daughter. And when we when we left the when we left the theater, my niece asked, "Was Alita really there?" Because she couldn't tell, she couldn't tell that Alita was CG. And she had to ask after the movie, "Was she really there?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, you know, she's she's CG, but it looks like she was really there." That's how impressive it was. Now. Um, so we'll see if Alita gets snubbed again. No, she didn't get snubbed because she got a nomination. So that's not a snub. But, uh, you know, will, will Alita win an award? I don't know. I hope so. But even if Alita doesn't, we still, you know, we got her back. We are, we are Alita's greatest reward, if you ask me. Not to sound arrogant or cocky or anything, but what, what more can you ask for? So many franchises out there are dealing with some problems <laughs> more or less let's just put it that way they have problems and their fans are not happy i think any any studio would be absolutely over the moon even if the movie didn't perform well i think a studio would be extremely happy to have a, a fan base as passionate as a leader army so much so that a leader army even makes headlines makes media headlines 
And of course, some of that has come for the wrong reason, but that was out of our control. We fought that, but some people wanted to, to use the hashtag to do something that was not necessary. So moving on here, I like this post from Dennis Wan. He says, she was one of the rare ones, so effortless, effortlessly herself, and the world loved her for it. I think that's, uh, that's a very beautiful statement and, and a very beautiful picture as well. The next thing that I want to share is from an LA film school, um, I guess you could say a thread, but really it's related to an article that's related to a thread. And I'll just click on that to show you what they had to say. See, I think it was a couple days ago. I can't remember, maybe it was a couple days ago. The LA film school had put out a question, a poll, and they asked in this thread, what who or who we believed every speaking to everybody was the most convincing cg character ever and of course the leader army showed up and we uh, started voting for a leader and as you know as we are want to do and and it could have i was expecting i was expecting a lot more uh backlash than we got because you know this is the LA film school and California is probably really, really far left leaning. And, and we know how a lot of those people feel about, um, Alita for some strange reason, <laughs> even, even though Alita has everything that they should love and enjoy, but we didn't, I didn't get the backlash that I thought we would. And so I'm pleasantly surprised by that. And so th what the LA film school did was they, um, more or less, congratulated us for winning the thread. Who is the most convincing CG character ever? So you have Alita on one side and Caesar on the other. And if you ask me, it wasn't really close, but they say it was close. So is it Alita Battle Angel, Caesar from Planet of the Apes, Thanos or someone else? Or Thanos, however you want to say it. So if you had to choose the most realistic CG character of all time, who would it be? We asked our Twitter followers the same question, and there was an overwhelming response. Okay, if it's overwhelming, then it wasn't really close, right? And that, I'm just saying. Most of the replies were Team Alita, or hashtag Team Alita. And I have to, I have to take issue with what they said right there. Even though I'm, I'm glad that they acknowledged the Alita fans, we're not hashtag Team Alita. <laughs> that... The only person I've seen using that hashtag was Scott Mendelson. And I wonder if, I wonder, uh, yeah, I wonder if LA Film School had got that from Scott Mendelson. But uh, this is kind of, that kind of, that kind of bothered me just a tad bit because in a way it felt like they intentionally, I'm just, I don't have any proof of it. I just felt like maybe they just didn't want to use the hashtag Elite Army because maybe they thought it was associated with something that they didn't want to put out there. And really, our, our reputation is pretty dang on good. So I don't know why, if they had an issue with using a leader army, I don't know why they would. But moving on, I'm going to scroll up here. Alita is the heroine of the popular manga comic series Battle Angel Alita, created by Yukito Gashiro in the 90s. Now I'm going to scroll down some more here. Uh, just to get to this part here where it says, Alita was the clear winner in our Twitter debate. Rosa Salazar's performance as Alita felt authentic because the cameras captured every emotion and expression seamlessly. However, there were strong runner-up contenders. Thanos and Caesar tied at a close second to Alita Battle Angel. Now, see, they said it was a close second, <laughs> but then they... At the other, like a second earlier, they said it was uh, Alita was a clear winner, and at the beginning of the article, they said that that there was an overwhelming response. So it doesn't really sound like they were a close second, but I, maybe they're just being nice to to Caesar and um, to Caesar and Th Thanos fans. But no disrespect to Thanos because they did they did have some good CGI there. Um, he looked pretty doggone real. Yeah, it's about real as this eight or nine foot purple guy can look. 
Um, so you got to give him that. But he doesn't beat Alita, in my opinion. <laughs> there was too much in that movie, uh, Avengers, that was just like, it was well below, well below, in my opinion, what the standard should have been. So I'll show some of the tweets that they had shared from the Twitter debate. Okay, so they had one from Huge Alita fan. I'll just scroll up a little bit more. Huge Alita fan says, Golem eyes use not 50,000, yeah, 50,000 polygons. I can't, I'm trying to zoom out a little bit more so you can see the whole thing, but I can't. Golem's eyes use 50,000 digital polygons. Alita's, by contrast, have 9 million polygons in just one iris. The rendering is exponentially more precise. VFX supervisor Eric uh, Sainda and Sainda spoke with Vulture and they provide a link. But uh, I wish Vulture had used a better picture, but they didn't. Uh, let's, here we have one from Hell Demon 2. Alita Battle Angel, she could basically be standing right next to you in the room and your brain would recognize her as real. And there's a shot of her eyes from the movie. That is pretty darn real looking. Of course, you can't see on my phone, but you know, there that you have the little white hairs that are on her skin that are really um, incredible. So we have one for Shadow Without, who says, without a doubt, there is only one who has fully broken the uncanny valley barrier and become real. And we have one more from Cranberry Jam. He says, hands down, it's a leader perfection. And that's a hair edit. That's another hair edit. I think edit, um, um, uh, Dennis Wine did their hair edit as well. But boy, I just love Alita's eyes in that picture. I just love her big brown eyes. But Moving on, I have one more thing I would like to share. Okay, I want to show you this comparison. I wanted to do another one just to take a look at uh, some new movies, movies that came out this year, see how they compare it to Alita. And as you can see, I'm searching all film, uh, what do you call it, film titles or film search terms. I'm not looking for just generic. Like if I was to look for Spider-Man, of course I would turn up more results for Spider-Man because you have Spider-Man comics, Spider-Man toys, Spider-Man this and that. But just comparing films here, Spider-Man films to Avenger films and Alita films and things like that. And also added Detective Pikachu in there. So uh, one more thing, let me go over the colors here. Avengers Endgame, first Alita is blue, Avengers Endgame is red, Spider-Man is yellow. Star Wars is green. Po Pokemon is going to be in purple. Now comparing these at the beginning of the year, I think it was last year, Avengers Endgame had a huge boost. That's probably when that trailer dropped. I think that's about probably about right. And around this where you see the big spike for the blue, that is Alita's spike. And that is when Alita was in theaters. So that would be the time I guess a lot of people discovered Alita. Apparently she wasn't on the radar before then. So that was a, that's a pretty decent size spike though. Let's look at the whole chart here and compare it to everything else. That's a nice size spike. Um, of course it's not going to compete with a, uh, a movie like Avengers Endgame, but I mean, I, it's half the size. And so that's that's a nice, decent size spike. And um, Spider-Man, as I said, uh, Far From Home is in yellow. Now, maybe people who were searching for the Spider-Man Far From Home movie only searched Spider-Man. And so that's why the, 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 the results are so low for Spider-Man Far From Home. But... It may also just be that people simply were not very interested. Um, people felt no need. That might be the drawback of having movies that are guaranteed to be sequels and guaranteed to be coming out because when you people know that a movie is coming, there's not much need to, to search it, not much need to get on Google and, and look it up. So this may possibly be why Spider-Man's results have looked like they've 
just flatlined. And of course the green was, I'm sorry, I forgot who the green was. Oh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. And there was one spike or probably in between March and April. I think that's when the trailer debuted for that. But down here in July, the only movie that spikes down here is uh, Alita. And of course, that would be around the time that the, the, the home video was released. The Blu-rays especially, DVD and Blu-rays. But everything else uh, seems to be sort of maybe maybe towards the end. Maybe the Rise of Skywalker is rising a little bit more now. And it probably will go higher as we get towards the release date. But I think for a Star Wars movie, this is really, really low. And if I was Disney, I would be concerned with that. Because just looking at this for most of the year, Alita is is showing people are showing much more interest in Alita than they are in episode nine. And the same would be for Spider Man. Um, of course, Spider Man is important to the MCU, but people aren't searching for it, people aren't hungry for information on the next movie and things like that. It's almost like they just know it's coming. And so they aren't very active in looking for information. What, so what this may be an indication of is that Alita has the most active or the most possibly, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe this might be an indication of, of the interest, the fan interest, and that Alita has the most interested fans. But that's all I wanted to show you. And that's the end of this update. Sorry if it went on long. And, as you, and I'm also sorry for my usual low production quality, but anyway, I do I do what I can when I can. So thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you later.